Welcome back, everyone, to the OJ Pit Miner. Still going through, of course, with our close calls, this time for Europe. Already, first map done, out of the way, quick enough. G2 took the win, expected. Yeah, it was quick, but it wasn't as quick as I think everyone expected it to be. Uh, Existence put up a very, very good fight. This is far from the last of them we will see, but we say that a couple of times with them. The next two games that we'll have today, Trust Gaming versus Orglus, two CL teams that haven't actually met in CL yet, and then Penta versus Envic. So that'll be the third one. But to find out who is going to battle against the G2 that looked a little bit withered earlier today, I guess that'll be our next game. Trust Gaming versus Orglus. Yes, both teams which haven't had the best of runs inside of Chandra League so far, both sitting uh, fifth and I believe sixth alike. Um, it's kind of like the pre-show to the actual Chandra League match because these guys played each other in the last week of Chandra League in week number seven. Uh, and it's going to be, again, another two weeks till we actually see that take place. So this is going to be the uh, kind of warm-up match, I would say. Yeah, it's the thing about it is obviously they will be very familiar with each other. They'll have, of course, done prep about each other and they've seen how each other's been mm -hmm. doing in yeah. the league. Trust Gaming, unfortunately, haven't had the best time. I think it's fair to say. But then you also look at Orglus, which has obviously some huge names and the history that they've had in Pro League and other places. And, you know, it's just not also been as good for them. That's almost a sentence. But we'll see how they decide to battle it out in a best of three scenario as we jump to the map bands. And I guess it's always the balance of where they want to go. I feel like Trust Game are going to want to get rid of Bank or Consulate. They seem to not have a fantastic history there. Both these teams in Challenge League haven't had a fantastic history in maps. Uh, I could see Villa being an option to be left open by both teams. I could definitely see that map being played out of the three that we're probably going to end up with. First ban, I, I kind of feel, is going to set the tone and how they're going to go. Because typically in a best of three... You either ban your worst map, or you ban the other team's best map. Orglus on Coastline, I think, is going to be their ban. I think they're going to take out Coastline, and there it is. They don't like to play it. They like to ban it, and Trust like to play it. They're a very good Coastline team. So it's just, yeah. it, the ban makes sense perfectly. And then from then on, as I said, I feel like Trust are going to ban out something like a Bank, potentially something with a lot of space, something that you know, they don't really want to go to, to kind of, into the nitty-gritty of it because it hasn't been a fantastic map for them before but I guess it depends if they know something about Orglus that we don't let's see what they go with I could definitely edge towards the bank Europe isn't really known for the bank plays Cafe was another one that was kind of lingering in the back of my head that can be a potential ban uh, you know trust really their only good map well I say good map it's the only map they've actually kind of won on it has been Villa this season yeah, uh, and, I, and I could easily also see, uh, you know, kind of Orglus also go with the kind of villain, leave that up, because they've had some varied results on it as well. Well, the thing about Orglus is, under my what they like to play, Cafe is the only one I actually have written there in terms of statistically what they generally favour. So again, it seems like these are two smart target bans against the opposing team. As we said, they will have a lot of research about each other just from the fact that they are already in a pretty big league against each other as well, and they're both middling towards the lower end of the table, so they need the ability to drop each other. Now it's down to the picks. And, well, there's a lot on the board here. As you said, Villa was a pretty consistent go-to. We know that Team Orglus do enjoy a lot of the kind of depth of the maps as well. So it's not the most out there selection. I would like to see a consulate, if I'm honest. I haven't seen consulate yet. No. That is, that's all, that, that's a complete option for, I think, both teams trust have had uh, all right results. You know, they drew against Scissorgy and, and even Orglis, uh, they Even Clubhouse is, is a good one for them. They drew against fours in their matchup. And drawing against fours, we know that that's not an easy task. Well, that's it, especially with the kind of swing and uh, talent that Forza are currently bringing. Clubhouse is where they are going to opt to play for the first map. That is the Orglus pick. And the second time we'll see that today and across the entire series, actually. I don't think we saw it at all across LATAM. And we'll see, obviously, if Trust can respond with something. There's a lot on the board for them to pick here, a lot of the board for them to bring to this firefight. I could see Trust picking Consulate, potentially, and then that would kind of leave us with Bank Border Villa. And by that logic, I think Villa would then be our decider with then Trust banning out uh, probably Border and Orgles ban out Bank. I'll go with that. Um, I mean, Trust have had a pretty good showing on Border sometimes, but I guess Border is well-worn, it's well-stepped on, and against a team like Orgus, you know that they're going to be very familiar with it, um, and they're going to be very solid in and amongst it. So I guess we'll just have to see, obviously, when the next one comes through. There it is, Bank, as we called it. Ooh! 
Very That's beginning. a curveball. Yeah, it's it's as I said, it's, it, it's one I called at the very beginning as something that they ban, and they're actually going to opt to go there instead. Potentially, again, they might know something, they might have some fresh strategies they want to bring, or they just know that Orglis don't really like to run there. So I guess that's something instead that they're going to want into their wheelhouse. We've only seen Trust play Bank once this season. That was against BDS, where they, they lost 7-5 in that one. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is they've kind of been a bit limited in the scope in terms of what they can kind of do and bring to it, but... Yeah, who knows how this day can go? We've already seen some pretty surprising results and rounds so far, and Bank is a map. I mean, we saw some pretty pretty crazy Bank stuff yesterday with Latam. Oh, yeah, well, that's Latam, isn't it? And yeah. EU's a lot more, I think, generic in how things are kind of done there, where the Rome game isn't as heavily inducted compared to what, you know, we kind of seen from Liquid, of course, yesterday, and even, yeah, gaming we could add into that mix. They were also very aggressive on their kind of Bank plays, and... Uh, we go in and you look at the final three remaining maps. I honestly, it has to be a Villa left for the third option. It has to be. I mean, based on the ones that they've opted for as well, yes, they've kind of started banning out the smaller, more aggressive potential maps as well. And obviously, Consulate leads into the small side of that and Border leads into the kind of aggressive side of that. There it goes. Trust are going to take Border out of the equation, not bring the fight to the board's border. I'm assuming here it would be a Consulate and then we play on the Villa. They've did up for the Clubhouse. But then at the same time, Consulate's a very good map for the EU region. It's one that they've often had a lot of success in. And there it is. They're actually going to ban out Villa. To be fair, on those decisions, I think there was not really a wrong decision. It's where you kind of want to take mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. Consulate for them is probably something that plays better into their wheelhouse, especially when they've seen them opt more towards yeah. mm -hmm. bank. We're back now. That was a little, <laughs> a little subtle way disappeared for a second. But Clubhouse, Bank, and Consulate. Three maps we haven't seen the biggest run of. No, uh, Consulate's a weird one because Orglas haven't won this season on consulate yet either and they've played a fair share of times they've lost they've also had draws on it but nothing really to say wow they look really solid on it basically guys we're dealing with two teams who haven't really shown us a whole great deal but it has been a very stacked season for both of them and now we're going to see them go head to head of course as the game is ready let's move into our first map clubhouse on the board well, there's the have fun in from KS, and I guess we'll see if they can find a way to make it Thatcher. The first ban on Clubhouse makes a little bit more sense than the myriad of Thatcher bans we saw the other day in Latin. But again, this is a scene we're much more familiar with. August now taking their time as they're opting, well, they're on the attack first, not opting for, have to. Trying to decide what they want to take out of the equation here, because obviously whatever they have as a tool for their rounds is going to be in Trust's arsenal and the repeat, and you don't want to get landslid by a solid attack on this side. Thatcher ban first off, so if we don't if we don't see a Kaid come out and actually manage to successfully Kaid trick, I, I I don't get the point of going for the Thatcher. I mean, yes and no. Like it, it's a bit more control of, I guess. A bit more limit of the hatches and a bit more kind of control on that side of thing. They want to make sure that they have those locked down. They don't have to worry too much about the space that it often takes and the manpower and utility that it takes to keep control of them. But again, all this are being very slow and steady about their decisions here. They're really kind of weighing it up at this point. Another thing about the Thatcher ban is Thatcher is totally unique in what his gadget does. There's nobody on the attack who comes close to what he, uh, you know, has his role in. And that may be another thing why teams like to ban it, because it's an extremely strong gadget. If Thatcher is available, we always see him be picked up. Yeah, sure, it's great for denying, of course, Kaids and Bandits, which combo over your Fermite, but only getting rid of ADSs and different stuff like that, Maestro Cameras, it's really helpful in the long run. And perhaps if we were to see another operator who is similar to kind of what Thatcher does, then that would help out immensely. It's kind of what we talked about whenever you look at Habana and Fermite, and Maverick also being added in. There was points where we've seen, you know, Fermite and uh, Habana be banned that in one map and then you have to rely on the Maverick and if Maverick wasn't there where would you go from that point? Well Church and Arsenal room we're going to head to this was a pretty uh, pretty con uh, I'm trying to think of the word now that kind of fits the amount of violence that we saw on this point in the previous map uh, blood, Bloodshed? Blood map? Blood, blood no, well no that, that last one he's not in siege anymore but uh, Church and Arsenal room we're going to head to <laughs> first now as we get everything <laughs> set up and Maverick instantly on the board to try and lock down those hatches and try and stop the Kaid from doing kaid things I learned the other day that he's 6'5 Kaid the operator 6'5 that's just 6'8 is what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's six feet. That's insane. He is from Scotland. No, oh, that's true. They grow them bigger out there. There's more space. More mm -hmm. air. Well, unless them. you're Doki, of course. 
Yeah. That's which you clearly missed that train. It's where the trade of height went. Yeah. Uh, so imagine going from six foot eight to uh, like what four foot eleven, something like that. I think it's roughly around the yeah. If around we round that mark. Up. Yeah. Um, setting themselves up for this basement hold, which is the usual standard go-to, especially with Thatcher off. This gives you so much power. Thatcher off, still got a Kaid. The control that you can have on these hatches, the control that you can have across this floor, is potentially monumental. And you would expect Trust to at least keep a lot of solidity about the vertical play here. Obviously, Maverick can make some nightmares happen in the hands of them, but with Habana as the single hard destruction as well, in terms of big open breaches with a bit of pace. Uh, gone and leaving her thermite, sorry, as the only hard destruction open with the pace. I guess we'll see if they can kind of just slow the roll of Orglas. So a ban a ban on Clubhouse. Generically, you either see the Maverick ban more often than not. So since Habana is going to be there instead of the Maverick, all that ban does is it makes the downstairs attacks more difficult for the attackers, but it makes the cash rooms a lot easier for the attackers with the addition of Maverick. You just have to worry about the bandit trick coming in. Yeah, and that's the thing about it is, the, you know, it's always this balance on Clubhouse because it's such a big map. There's so much space to it. There's so much kind of, I guess, fear about the whole thing because you never really know when stuff's going down. We've obviously seen some aggressive play instantly hit against Blue as they try and almost without any hesitation throw bullets towards the church side and Leonski is able to at least batter them back but look at the damage already done to Kaid, Jaeger and Zafia. Kryon is a player that's always going to be one that's at the forefront is statistically one of the best players in CL right now even though the team otherwise hasn't had the best of seasons so it just shows what they can kind of bring to the table. Rips is opening up this vertical trying to get some control as Maverick slowly does some work across these hatches but with how little his health is more of those zaps from the Kaid isn't going to put him any favors as he just tries to finish his home furnishings here and allow this mohatch to pop open but there is the guns underneath and they tear his head off as nks is the first loss Avaish is the man I'm looking forward to seeing in this series. If you look at the stats that were displayed uh, yesterday in terms of the Challenge League and kind of what stats we kind of gathered, Avaish was the number one player for the week. Hitting a 1.81 KD, 29 kills, 16 deaths and 22 rounds. And four opening kills and one opening death for himself. But he's not really that main entry fragger that we expect to get those solid opening kills. He's more of the reserve anchor player. And of course, an operator like Kai, it kind of suits his play style. So there's still a little bit more to do for Morglis. And that's a great bounce nade straight through the floor. And that's eliminated that sniper shotgun. That was two grenade kills in the exact same place, the exact same way. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. Crying, as we said, is going to be a big part of this. Instantly finds two frags. They managed to at least get a little bit back on their side, but it's a three versus one. Jaeger, what can you pull out here as, well, all the guns of Babylon are slowly closing against this church, and Orglas take the first round in pretty proficient styling. Oh, Orglas, they just had everything going for them. Rips. Wow, the nades. Um, unreal, the way Two he was able to bounce that the exact same way. The same way, twice in a row, and in the death cam you saw the previous body of the smoke that suffered the exact same fate. You've really got to kind of be a bit more aware and awake to those kind of deaths, because those are the ones that, if they're allowed to keep getting those kills and those kind of style of kills where it's a little bit out there and a little bit silly and it can be covered a little bit better with just some more attentiveness, Otherwise, things might start to very quickly sink through your fingers. Head back to Church and Arsenal Room for a second attempt now. And I guess Trust are going to try a very similar thing and try and keep a little bit more control. They did get the opening frag, but from then on, Maverick already had the hatch and it was just a matter of the pressure that was being expertly applied by Orglis all over the place. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defeated. Trust need to have a little bit more prowess in terms of their aggressive nature because basement is a solid site for the attackers because everything's kind of simple that kind of plays in their favor. The destructibility that you gather from kitchen is great. You basically sanction off an entire bomb site away from the defenders. If you don't hatch, also means they can't really sit in armory all too well. And if you're not blue, you create a lot of crossfire. That's the thing about basement. You have three hatches in different points. It's not as if they're all beside each other. They both collapse extremely well into a kind of triangle of death that you can spread out between yourselves. And for Trust, they need to try and upset something in the recipe that is Orglas and their basement attacks. They need to try and perhaps have some rotate. You know, blue stairs could be an option for them. Even a late rotate in towards the blue tunnel up through the staircase in the garage. We've seen rotations like that before. There's options for Trust, and 
Sure, I'll, I'll let them possibly try and anchor once more. If it doesn't work, then they need to try and change something up. But if they want to go for the same thing and perhaps try and uh, tweak just steady things, such as the positions they were playing in, so they don't, aren't prone to nades, do they perhaps put more ADSs towards that side where they were getting naded? Uh, we'll see how they kind of prepare for it. But still, Orgles, I feel if, if they have one of the, the best like, kind of setups that you can get. You know, you have the hard breach, you have, of course, Sophia Deedle with Maestro cameras, you have Bach with the Nays, can open up Kitchen, and Capitan, more importantly, who is extremely strong if they're like blue. Well, Jinx is waiting no time before he drops Cry in and takes the Zephyr out of the equation. Obviously, that is from the intense pressure that was previously being applied on to Blue, and this time they just found a bit of a quicker response for it. A very big operator to take out of the equation as well, with the use of utility that we've seen him not only able to do as he proficiently presses his way into the point and finds all of the people inside. Jinx is going to stay in Blue for now as the drones come from multiple different angles and is expecting the shutdown from Oil Pit sees the drone sneak out on the other side. In the meantime, Deepak is waiting for someone to attack Kitchen Hatch with Meads not far away either. Now, we've known that they've put pressure on Moto is usually their first go-to, and that kind of corner of, as a uh, cornerstone of their push before they break their way uh, through the rest of the defense. But with the first loss on their side and the second time, it seems like Trust, uh, or Orcus even, are being a lot slower Attack this time around. So there's uh, Orglis pulling it back, of course, into a 4v4. And that does eliminate Jinx Style, who was that replacement for Quadzi in the beginning of the season for Trust Gaming. And Diapek, another bright young star for the Dutch region. He's uh, kind of been the most solid Frager, I think, that the Dutch region has to offer in these kind of pastimes since Trust started beginning. You know, we've seen this guy take his debut back in Dreamhack Valencia in 2018 with Trust. And, well, Trust have always been that team which have always grinded their way, but never really got the results they were looking for. Let's see if perhaps this tournament could be the one they're, they're after. Well, it's suddenly a 3-3 in the meantime of all of that, and now it's a 2-3. Trust have found their way back into the swing of things, but they're being very aggressive with their holds. Diabien is holding on the far side, has the Capital Bolts to force the man out from the back of blue, and is looking to try and catch him on the rotate, but otherwise, no dice so far. Rips, in the meantime, was pretty deadly with his grenade, suffers the opposite fate, as the Capital Bolt just does not do the damage, but doesn't find the frag either. The big man and Kaid dips underneath the hole and sneaks his way back around to a slightly better place, but with only 15 seconds left on the clock and Capital with only smokes in his pocket and one stun and guns on every angle, that was only really going to go one way. Trust. They took the lead, lost it a little bit in the middle, but managed to pull themselves back to their first round win. So Trust, the anchor this time, did uh, follow through, and it was true enough for Orgles to kind of crumble. You look at the setup that Orglus went through that time. There was a bit of lack of communication with the timing issues that they had in terms of the guy pushing in through Mo and the guy in blue. Capitao missing that fireball kind of cost them that you know, should have been a dead guy in blue. That would have opened up things entirely. Uh, and it kind of put then the remaining players of trust back into a corner where they then would start to panic and start trying to give themselves away and trying to get something on. But then if you try and force your way into a play style that you're not accustomed to, you start to fall behind. Well, Clash 6th pick for a Valkyrie has two very different playstyles advertised, and it's going to give them a little bit more of a sneaky amount of information, especially with IQ so consistently not on the table so far. It allows them to kind of, I guess, get a bit more range and a bit more depth on their external holds. And for a point like this, where you're often expecting to get some pressure potentially from construction, potentially from garage, potentially from underneath, you've got to kind of keep your eyes and your sight lines across it all. Trust, obviously, we've only really seen them on the first point so far, which is generally Generally, a pretty wide basement full floor point. Haven't really stretched their defense too much. They haven't really thrown too much to the roam. They've had the Jaeger drop Kryon from mainly Kryon's pace more than anything. But it'll be curious to see if they find a little bit more space under their boots when they come to a point that is less isolated. I think is the easiest way of putting it. Setting up the cameras underneath, as I said, they're going to keep an eye and a sight line and make sure that soft destruction doesn't become the absolute nightmare that we've already seen it been from other teams so far. And the last one is just going to pop out this window. That is the Valkyrie revealed, though. You seal the spawn on the far side, and theoretically, they'll quickly get at least that camera. Orgle's still bringing that same line up, and Inkway Trust, a uh, very similar one from them as well. So Bandit being chosen, so Kaid has been left away, and... 
Well, this is where Maverick comes in really strong for the attacking team in towards the cash. He can open up the entirety of that top. You don't even need to really go for the fur mine. Have to worry about dealing with a bandit trick or even a Kai trick. Of course, if you try and eliminate the, the kind of feet level, which doesn't mean he can't bandit trick, you can simply remove the entire wall as a Maverick. You can just get rid of it, make it soft, and then like a buck or Sophia can open it up, which I think is what they're trying to attempt. Well, they're trying to at least get the bottom of this wall open as well. And as you said, they're trying to dig out all the hard bits. So it's just lovely, soft, gooey middle that can be destroyed by most of the army of soft destruction they have in and amongst their mitts. Meads, in the meantime, doesn't wait around, drops crying and rips, finds jinxed owl as well and quickly swings back to offer the cover that they may actually need. They've lost a little bit of their soft destruction, but this wall is already open and there goes KS. Suffering quite a lot after his maverick trickery seems to be consistently shut down by a gun that is just happy and willing and waiting to find more than enough of his blood. And Meads, in the meantime, with that big old LMG, finds his second frag on the top and finally gets shut down by Rips. Still a good position for Trust, even though they've lost control of Garage. There's plenty of men available on the bomb site. And whenever you still have the smoke alive, of Aishu, who you know can go off in those anchor positions, and even Diapek. And if he still has a C4, more importantly, he can even rotate below. And heck, even if Leonski has one, then he can do so and play two and basically denies everything the Orgles want to try and attempt. Yes, still that C4 in hand for Diapek. And Kind of feels if Orgles are onto them as Buck is ready to entry in towards the lounge to deny that access for Diapek. Still Leonski, he's in quite a precarious position because he has been droned out. Nobody knows he's here, but if someone does creep up in towards the garage stairs while pressure be supplied by the breach, then it could be a free kill for Orgles and could swing things back into their favor. Well, he's just waiting and holding on for now, and he's going to try and be slow and steady. The buck is going off, worried about the cover on the rotation there, and does find the diffuser carrier, but the quick, quick cover from Orglas is able to shut him down. Leonski, in the meantime, finds KS picked up, but dropped yet again, and now it's just down two rips to try and find the diffuser with a way onto point. With only 30 seconds left, is only really limited by the push here. Still has a frag grenade, but with the out on ADSs, it doesn't actually get caught there. It's the smoke canister that pops off and the grenade goes off, but to no avail as it rolls down. The two guns either side, one of them a shotgun and one of them a very, very deadly MP7. And surely he is shut down before he can really find his feet. Trust Gaming put themselves back into the lead after stumbling a little bit at the beginning. But now they've got to rotate to their third pick point. Solid from Trust. Like a rock not being moved and Orgless. Well, they have to go back to the drawing board for that one. And I think the big downfall there for, for Orglis was the communications. There wasn't a refrag potential in terms of the coverage. Quite surprised at Chaos. Uh, Chaos? They're not here. Not yet. No, not yet. Uh, KS. They're later. They're later. Uh, KS, whenever he was pushing in towards that breach, nobody was there for the cover. You know, as soon as the Capital got killed, he kind of panicked, feels like, oh, I need to now try and make up a kill. He didn't need to. You still had Buck there available. That would be the only kind of thing I would look at as the Orglers are trying to panic for the kills and try and retain it. They need to keep their cool. Yeah, it's cool as ice, you know? You kind of expect this as well from a team. Obviously, one of the most cited things about a team like Orglus with their storied history is they've had experience on the bigger stages. They've had experience in the kind of upper echelons of the game, and that is when you kind of define your cool and your confidence and your chill about those situations and keep yourself covered. And so far, as we said, we're still seeing some kind of teething issues that might tie into the, the unlucky swings they've had in the current CL run. But this is a point where you can get a bit more control, a bit more kind of aggressive with it. It's usually the third go-to point. It's usually the hardest to defend. And Orglas have arguably taken the um, easiest to defend point in the very first round. Valkyrie's still on the board again, going to keep that information, and then it's otherwise a very standard hold. You're going to see the castle on that gym window. Keep control of the bandit, who's going to be tricking his little skin out. And then they've obviously got the ADS to try and stop any cheeky grenades underneath too. So gym and bedroom, which is a bomb site that we didn't see during the G2 matchup. Uh, quite surprisingly, the only two bomb sites being played there was Cash and 
of course, the basement. So this will be our first gym bedroom that we're going to analyze and really see how Trust Gaming set up shop for. And Castle's a, a big one because he can sanction off a lot of the windows that are scattered around, of course, in towards the bedroom. And, and even whenever you have an extended hold in towards cash, which is kind of the norm for a lot of teams, you can castle off this very important window that Meads was just looking at because that kind of gives your team a little bit more breathing room. Because if that gets open, which it will do, it creates a sanction between the guys in the cash room side compared to the guys in the gym and bedroom. So if there is a quick push and aggressive nature kind of style rush in towards the actual bomb site, those two guys towards cash, they're not going to get back in. They're cut off, quite similar to what we see with the breach being open towards that cash side. Well, they're struggling to currently get this integral jacuzzi wall open so far. <laughs> Waiting for the hatch on logistics there to be dropped with some aggression, and they're actually just going to rotate away. And you can see the man hopping on the table in the background trying to find the bodies, but no luck so far. They've been forced away from being able to bandit trick this, and it's just a matter of time, theoretically, until they actually get this open. But last time we saw this kind of go down, it was very quick response from Trust to drop some bodies through it. Look at that angry face that they have made. Oh, no, there goes the eyes now. A Cyclops. Trying to find the way inside and against the bathroom to apply some pressure from this corner, but now that they've made this an uh, impossible place for Trust to play, it becomes pretty systematic in the shutdown across this top floor. In the meantime, Crying on the opposite side has found his way, well, towards the east balcony, and it's just making all of the space for Trust get smaller and smaller, faster and faster. Trust still holding firm, and surprisingly, Orgulus have no intention of trying to clear out this cash room, which could cost evident whenever we could see simply the guy jump out the window and go for the quick couple of shots onto anybody out in the balcony. Instead, they're looking to pressure not just into War Shakuzi, but main stairs as well. Oh, would have been a nice shot from Valkyrie if she hit it, but no, KS with Silencer nonetheless, so he's going dark. and. Well, now crying, looking to try and open up even more so than what he already has done in this game so far, but a bit of a bounce back. Leonski, still holding firm, is winnable now for the two Dutch players. And let's see if Orgulus can try and man up some courage here. It's, it's looking grim. Well, Deepak has pulled himself back towards the construction side, ready and waiting for anyone to try and rotate on logistics. And there is the C4 from Leonski. Takes care of Preno, gets caught in the rotation back towards the point. Great movement, and Orglas find the response and the shutdown there as they collapse in as soon as the information came through. They read them like a book. Wow, that could have really went either which way. If you think about it, you know, we got that kill come in, of course, from the bandit. Great refrag. But even if Kaid managed to get, and again, another refrag and the guy pushed in towards that bedroom, could have been a 1v1, and that could have went either side. We know what 1v1s are like. Typically, there's more pressure on the attackers because they have to go for the plant. But either way, Orgla, still a nice read in, seeing that, there, you know, there's a lot of people in towards that cache. We'll just play it simple. We'll play in Jacuzzi. I thought Crime was great there getting the entry frags. It always helps them to kind of give them a bit of a morale. You know, mid-round, it says, oh, what a massive double kill. That gives us now the numbers advantage. Let's just push in. Let's take the frags. We're feeling good. We're feeling fresh. Um, and everything else from Trust, again, if you're holding the cache, the whole point of holding cache is to deny access to that point of the map. You don't allow then teams to have a simpler way of simply pushing in towards construction and planting default and be beside the bed. You basically force the enemy team to go for Jacuzzi. If that's the case, then why aren't they utilizing the hatch that's inside construction, rotating below, and then using the C4s that, you know, they had so many of them. They had, what, three that round? Yeah, there was a lot of utility kind of stuck in pocket, and unfortunately they just couldn't find the way to open it up. Have opted for Jim again. Obviously, Church was an option. They could have rotated two with the kind of point system at this point. So they're going to instead try and take it. They were close. There's no denying that. They obviously lost a lot of ground very early on, and that really limited the sight lines that they could hold the Bank of Trust. But from that point onwards, they managed to find some pretty exceptional frags in and amongst the chaos again not the team. They find themselves now pushing against the similar point. Maybe Orglis expected to go against the basement. They've bought the Maverick and the Hard Destruction. Generally the same loadout they've done pretty consistently. I guess it's something that's playing very well for them so far. 2-2, and we did expect this game to be the, probably the closest battle so far, but there is Maverick wasting no time, and I don't think Owl heard that at first, and Meads is the one that's pinging it and covering the angle, pre-firing over the top, trying to catch the man repelling on the side, but no, they're actually going to back off and leave that as Avish tries to catch the man above logistics. Oh, the... 
Jaeger shotgun? What? Why? Avaish? We'll never know. Oh, he just nearly got caught out there. The pistol comes in, but why would you peek that? You got a kill with, you know, the meme gun, and then you just tried to gun a Fermite with a pistol. What? Is that... Why did he do that? God tier, mate. God oh. tier plays. From the God tier man, mate, wow. just to find one in amongst it with the old familiar M870, and from that point onwards, try some pretty bold actions. But we can already see Augustus is setting up on these windows. Obviously, you've always got to be concerned about the quick spin and run out that is such a big, big body taker uh, against this point. But otherwise, Prano is looking for a way in on this connector wall that was otherwise previously captured very quickly and very efficiently. You can see the fear in Leonski's eyes and his heart as he rotates and keeps his eyes across the main staircase, worried about someone rotating from underneath now that he's lost the cover of the aggressive Jaeger. But from this point onwards, Orglas, well, they're starting their shutdown. Kryan finds Leonski, and this will be this wall cracked open against Jacuzzi. Jinx is actually pulled back slightly further away from this logistics hatch. And, you know, it's just, again, a similar thing to the previous round. More and more ground is falling victim under Trust's feet, and Orglas are able and confident to just keep the sight lines. Kryan again getting those important kills during the mid-round, but quickly refrag there by Deepak. And now for Trust. There is potential, whenever Meads is still alive, who can go off in a, in a great position in construction, of course, that denies that jump in towards that bedroom, but still it's going to be tough whenever they have control of Jacuzzi and they can simply walk in and try and go for the plant. The only thing they need to be worried about is that C4 still in the back pocket of the Kaid, and there goes the fire arrows. That means that Meads now has to back off and can't really push in towards as the plant tries to come in, I believe. Yeah, now it's also a great smoke. It covers everything as the diffuse goes down, and now Diapek needs to see if he can... Pull this out of the bag. Oh, what an angle. He stops the plant. More importantly, now all pressure on Meads. Oh, it's somehow still been planted. It still went off. Meads now 1v1, getting that kill onto Rips. But outside is where the Capital fled to. Still holding. Waiting for Meads to make the mistake. Capitai knows he has all of the angles being held. And Meads knows exactly where he is. Will he go for the jump out? But no, Capital holding firm. And... At this stage, planted right in the middle of the room, Meats has to try and outsmart him, but I think that Capitao is smart enough to know a bait whenever he sees one, and yeah, the jump out, orgulously played it well. More importantly, Capitao there. Yeah, very, very good balance there from Capitao. Didn't suffer the bait, was ready to get that jump out. As we said, it's always going to be a big problem. It's always going to be a part, and when you're the attackers at the beginning of the round, it's the nightmare of someone's going to cover you from the CCTV side, and then when you're at the end of the round, you just kind of sit, wait, and listen, and use the audio of Siege that is so integral. Final defense round for Trust Gaming on this map. Going to opt to head back down to the church again. Won it once, lost it once. It was a bit of a point of contention for them. Can Orglas find their way? Because these past two rounds, they've been looking pretty efficient. It's just been some nifty fragging from the side of Trust to pull them back into the firefight. Church and Arsenal now is, is how we go. And Orglis, they have a really good standpoint, a really good selection of operators that they've chosen that kind of works with every bomb site that they're playing against. You know, you're limited whenever you don't have the Abana. So Fermat and Maverick's always going to be there. But I love the, the use of the Cabotau, an operator that is seen as extremely strong. But not a lot of teams really utilize them in the same way the Orglis have been putting the pressure on. And I like the fact that they're kind of saving their Cabotau bolts for the final execute. Because you think about it, if you're trying to deny a plant as a defender, your first thing is run at the guy and try and get the, the kill on the guy who's planting. If you smoke off and fire off the angles, it works a wonder. Nobody's really going to get past that wall of fire. One of the things that we're often kind of saying a lot is about utility, is about smokes and is about when to kind of use it. And it seems to be one of the most common factors. And when a team's attack falls apart, it's because they're not balancing their utility cost with the right kind of transactions throughout the round. So they'll be wasting stuff or they'll not be using stuff. And you'll often see people dying with stuff still in pocket. And it's just great to see them kind of, as we said, balance the smokes, balance the Capitao bolts, and balance when they need to actually use them to get off the executes and still have enough in pocket to be able to find themselves comfortable in the build-up to the execute. 3-2, as obviously, as I said, we can see this is a 3-3 split, which, if I'm honest, would 
even then, still play into August's favor. Defending this, Thatch is off the board. You've still got Kaid. You've still got a lot of possibility there. And from what has been some pretty well timed and tamed balances of attack, you can only assume Orgolists are going to bring that and transition that to their defense. In the meantime, trust what's been kind of flowing them through, as I've said before, is they're fragging. They've been b able to pick out these scenarios and these situations where against everything kind of swinging the other way, they've found a head and a body, and from then on, they've been able to at least piece themselves back into it. Maverick will begin his destruction of the hatch. Vaish now looking for it with, of course, the Aircock and trying to land a head or two, but still... Not much. And that's what we're, we kind of expect in the basement is not a lot happens within the kind of first two minutes. Typically, the minute mark is whenever everything kind of hits the fan and we see that quick, aggressive nature. But that's a great opening pick from Jinx Dal, and that does leave them options down, especially whenever Jinx Dal has caught on that there could be a rotate up in towards Garage, which is open for him. And just has to hope there's up. Oh, no rips. What have you done? Can we get an F? Uh, we, I think we're going to need more than... Uh, 1F, their Trust Gaming finding themselves in a bit of a benefit here as they've gotten the first two bodies down, and that is the two big soft destructions. KS puts one back the other way, which has often been his downfall, is getting these hatches open and then suffering a quick spin round, and there's the nice shots in chat, which is always nice to see, but he's only on a flicker of health. So you kind of look at what he's got to go against. There's the smoke, there's some zaps from a Maestro cam that's not going to be nice endings either way. Rotating against the blue to try and do the split push against the other side, Drops instantly down and almost catches the player of trust buried in. But there's another one on the opposite side, and suddenly it is one August member versus the world. Cannot quite find anything, and with Diffuser down cold in the oil pit, knowing you've got to push it, what do you do? Well, you find one against Jinx Dow with some pretty fantastic drop down, and now you've got the guns of Maestro at least aiming your way and still more bodies lying down. Maestro's actually just rotated up blue, gonna set up the crossfire. Smart move as smoke forces a man back on no health and it just needs a glaze to end his life. So Trust Gaming, they're going to square it off three rounds each as we head into the next half, of course, where Trust, they will take up arms on the attack, and Orglas, they get a chance to see how well they can defend. Just driving here, just uh, wasting time, and there we go. So, look at that setup from Trust. Again, going back to the anchor kind of things, which... I'm kind of against, because if you give Orglas as much control as what they're kind of getting, you need to try and push something out of Orglas and make them work ten times harder. Create some some roadblocks in the way that you could say off the kind of train that is uh, the German team. Yep. Um, big thing about me from Orglas is they're kind of predictable in what they kind of do, so we could want some more new stuff from them, I would say. I th yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's just the thing about this region if I'm going to see you, is very familiar with EU. We are, as we said, they've run the playbooks of each other. These are teams that are, all have long histories at this point. It's, it's rare to have a new EU surprise team. Um, even the ones, as we said, that are battling on the doors of Tier 3, like Existence and stuff like that, or battling on the doors of Tier 2, Attackers even, uh, like Existence, they're known. They have this history. They play in all these individual leagues. So it becomes kind of hard to reinvent yourself and reinvent the wheel when your region is the one that is so consistently, aggressively progressing that when do you find the time to workshop this stuff? Because at the same time, you've probably got at least two games that week, and all of them are as important as each other. When do you develop these pocket strats and when do you throw them out? It's up to the team to decide. That comes down to your decision making. More importantly, your IGL would have a big say in really what he sees fit as to what you want to go for. Ten seconds left before so we move into, of course, our first round for the defense of Oracle. Listen, it will be the basement being chosen. And since Habana Ban is, is still there and Habana is off the table, Probably Basement is a better fitted one uh, than really Cash. And if you look at really how Trust, they went in with their kind of defensive mind game, they only played the Cash the one time. Yeah, I mean, it's the kind of breakdown of it, really. And it was a very successful Cash hold for them. They were very good and very aggressive at keeping the balance on. But from that point onwards, they've otherwise not been able to really find their way through. Church so far has been a bit slow and steady in terms of they want to clear everything. Look at crying, though. Top floor from Jim gets the man outside. Those are the kind of maneuvers that work once, and you really hope they don't fall for it again. Great Rome game from the side of Orglas, and 
again, it's just kind of marred by the slow pace of Trust so far. They've dropped into uh, the blue stairs. They've thrown a lot of bodies, and they're trying to interrupt the roam. In the meantime, popping bullets around the side of pipes, but nothing quite lands on either side. The bolts come out, but no one is there to catch the run, and they try to bait her and cook her either side. Gets low and gets high, and finally at least drops one and gets the frag, and over the shoulder, Valkyrie pushes, gets taken in the meantime by the close down an oil pit, and suddenly Rips gets the double. All in all, it's fallen down to, well, nobody left. As Orglus collapses upon a trust that just Trusted too much. Yeah, that's not how you attack the basement. Trust just all piling in as much as they could and also not leaving anybody on flank watch. Hmm. Question mark would be the best phrase to sum that up. Well, I guess we'll see if they can keep finding their way back into this game. So far, it's been pretty back and forth. As we said, we kind of expected that. Gym, bedroom. We did say, to be fair, with the way Orglus was playing, these defense rounds are probably going to swing more into their favor. They've been quite active and quite aggressive. They've been able to try and find these firefights when they need to. And a lot of what we said in terms of trust was plucky luck getting them further and further into this game. And a lot of other teams would have been able to, but... You know, against a team that can be as ruthlessly efficient as Orglus, it becomes a bit tough to keep that consistently high level of refragging. Jim is going to be a make or break, really. Opting for its second, and I guess we'll see if they can find a way to well, make it work in the favor of their attack. It's an extensive hold. Just like Trusted, Orglus A will also follow through, and they're bringing Banda and Kaid, and. That kind of leads me to believe that they could have, you know, Kaid on one side and then Bandit on the other and try and really limit how much the Trust can get open. Sure, there's still that Maverick, but Maverick isn't as great against the Kaid because he can place it literally anywhere on the wall. It's not as if it's like a Bandit charge where it's, of course, predictable and where it can be. So it can be pretty tricky for Trust if they try and go for Jacuzzi and there is, a, uh, of course, a Kaid charge on it. Camera also being tossed right onto the words the rooftop, and hey, that's a nice one because that also covers the balcony area. If that doesn't get found by Trust Gaming, that will cause them a lot of issues because not only can you see the players who jump, of course, on towards the balcony, but you can also see how many people are headed towards Jacuzzi. And if that's early information that Kryan can gather, and he can say, oh, look, there's nobody pushing in towards Jacuzzi, they're all going to come from east side, then they can set up appropriately. Well, they're being, again, a little bit slow and steady here. Last time it was almost... Well, their victim crying for the second time in a row opens the frags and Deepak suffers on the top of red stairs as well with a quick swing round and they're reinforcing the rotation. This aggressive play style, as we said, is really working wonders for Orglus at this minute. And it seems like Trust are just not quite sure. The slow pace of their clearing is really just suffering in their well, holds and the ground that they get is very quickly lost. Swing around the corner, might be able to catch one, and they do cry and finally gets pulled apart. What has been an absolute nightmare on the previous two rounds, but with the Capital Bot on the top of the red stairs, they're just forcing and making sure no one's there as Avish tries to push aggressively against it. No luck and no joy. They've seen that the wall is fully reinforced at this point, and they have to funnel in through a door. Maverick is going to try and make things a little bit more creative and a little bit more nightmarish for the man on the close corner. But there's so many people on tables. This is the floor is lava. Tiptoeing around all of the holes that are being made by Trust Gaming, but this is just wasting time, and this plays nicely into Orglus and their game plan. Of course, if you're going for an extensive hold, you're there to get frags and there to waste time, more importantly. Anoski still has just one more fire arrow to go, but Avice using, of course, those holes being made will eliminate KS, and Anoski looking to push in. Has to be careful. Jaeger's still pre-firing, and well, it's going to try to fire him out. Oh, still wins it throughout the fire. That's perfect from the Jaeger, and that is definitely swing things back into Orgles' favor, especially whenever nothing's really happened for Trust, as they've made no headway in, and even, whoa, rips. Stop that. Stop this right now. Yeah, that was pure filth, Rips. I mean, it's going to have to be a mature stream from this point onwards. Unbelievable control there, swinging around and getting the double. And it just looks like it's slipping a bit further and further away for Trust at this point. Orglus, they found their stride. Rips 13 to 4 is having an explosive swing this game as well. But we'll just have to see if obviously they can keep the momentum up here. Flawless defenses in terms of win round. 
at this point and I guess we'll see if they can continue CCTV and cash. This was a point that we've only, as you said, seen once today and Trust took it. Can, well, Orglus replicate the magic or can Trust latch onto this? Is it a possibility of pulling themselves around back into the game? I always look at the Orglus story because they haven't had the greatest time over the past year. Very similar to what the secret story kind of lies with. You know, you look at both those teams, both went to Paris Major. Uh, that, yeah, they did go to Paris Major. At that time, they were known as, I'm pretty sure, Orglus at the time, but then, of course, they reverted back. Then they were Market at one point, whenever, they, of course, they went to uh, the Rio Finals. This was whenever Corey was still on the team. Then they went to Invitational, didn't really do anything there. Picked up by Navi, of course. Fell out of Pro League very quickly, along, of course, with Secret in Challenge League. It's been a really rough downfall from a team who was at a lot of, you know, major events, and it just kind of came crashing down from here. Yeah, I mean, it's the thing about it is because, as we said, they're they're an old school team. You you look at the lineup of they've got, you look at the players, and you look at how effective they have been and can be, and they can always battle to their way to the top. But they've just not really been able to find their groove in the updated meta and with the updated teams that come through. A lot of young aggressive gunners are able to swing their way around onto a lot of maps where their playstyle just isn't coming to fruition. However, that doesn't mean they're out for the count yet. We can always see their creativity coming to shine. And, you know, it's it's little problems and little ways you can kind of adapt and improve that can bring you back to the top of the heap one game at a time. The nightmare is that the general consensus of the game is it's just getting better and better in terms of player skill. The skill cap is ever climbing, and you're always seeing these fresh teams come through with people that are just unbelievable from out of no random league. Hits the shins of the ankles of Leonski, who takes a huge amount of damage there. He's only a teeny tiny bit from actually being dropped and is going to keep a very wide bearing against that doorway from this point on. Cryon seems like he's, you know, taken over by an unstoppable bloodlust right now and is repeatedly trying to get kills before people even get close to entering the building. Very heavy roam game from Orkless. This is a cash defense, and they're playing their Legion downstairs to be able to maneuver around in towards the bar area. First blood comes in the form of a frag grenade from Meads, and more importantly, that smoke off the board, and, well, the main man rips, gone. So it leaves Orgless now in a tough situation without that smoke, so it gives Trust a lot more breathing room, literally more breathing room, so you have to inhale the toxic babes. Mm -hmm. KS. Aggression is the name of the game for him. He's right beside two players. Let's see if he's going to try and approach that. Is he trying to eye it up? May go for the creep around. He needs information, though. He needs one of these players to start shooting their weapon at least, but doesn't look to be the case as Trustnauer moves directly in towards the garage. Here's the Capital. We'll try and sanction off some of the crossfire lines that see even Chaos and also Jaeger trying to form. And there's crying with the ACOG. That's the power of the dock, of course. Can land the targets right from inside the bomb site. And Chaos just barely misses out. But now he's made himself known to the players of trust. Well, the doctor is in. Gets you back up to top health as you set your sights on getting into another fight. Jaeger creeps across and crying in the meantime is still not out. He finds Leonski and finishes off what he started at the beginning of the round. But there is the refrag. Great swinging from Jinx to Allen for the first time. They're getting the diffuser down. And no, KS isn't allowing it. Drops the body from underneath. Jinx to Allen is going to try and replicate it. But KS is still underneath trying to find it and stop this. Stick the plant and get it down. But there is a quick trade off there. DPEC finds DVN and KS has a bit of work to do now. Finally rotated back to the top floor as flash grenades and utility pop off, but it's going to be a hard retake. Both angles are covered as you try and enter. There is one to your left and one to your right. How do you respond to this crossfire? And we've got to do something outstanding. Swings round and hits a body, gives away the position. Going to bounce a lesion and see if they can catch something from it, but no joy. Swings out. That was only really going to go that way at that point. Great play from Trust to get themselves into the point and get the diffuser down. Almost stopped from underneath by KS, but unfortunately can't make lightning strike twice. 5-4. The gap narrows to just one round again, but we're back onto the point rotation. Churchin is back on the table, at least, and um, that was a very, very good hold. And a very surprising and, if ill-informed, push from Trust. If Orglis know that Trust have no intention of clearing out roamers, why would you not bring more C4s? 
why not pressure trust to eliminate those c4 factors take that time and utility away from executing onto the site you think about ks yes, he was downstairs for pretty much the entire round until he had to come up and try and retake if he had a c4 and there was a bit of information being fed that round would never have taken place for trust the way it did yeah, I mean, that's the thing about it, is what we're seeing is they're trying these kind of more standard battley plays. They're holding horizontals, they're looking for these firefights. We've seen some good verticality from open hatches, but otherwise in terms of C4s and that kind of blessing we were gifted with a lot during the Latam play day, we haven't really seen much of it so far. And there just seems to be that breakdown of information. Alibi is on the board for the first time for EU today. They're going to try and utilize that to get a bit more information. It's a very good operator, especially with how aggressive Auglas have been playing. If they can bait out some early pre-fires and get some responses with the aggression that we've seen Cry and bringing, it could be another couple of bodies left way outside before they even get a sniff of the internals of this building. Still can go either way. Back and forth it's been so far. Orculus, I would say, having much more of a, of a better half. You know, they took, what, was it like five rounds at one point straight on the bounce? And uh, might have been four. I think it was I think it was four, wasn't it? Or five? Four. I forget. I'm not good with math. I think it was four rounds on the bounce that they take. Who? Uh, Orculus at one point. Or was it three? Uh, no, they've only done two. It's I swear open. it was three. No, it's open goes of two. They've, uh... It was one, then it was two, then it was two, then it was one, then it was two, then it was one. And that's where we're at right now. Are you trying to think back now? Yeah, I'm just I'm trying staring to remember. wistfully into the distance. This is I'm why I take notes. I take notes, but I think my notes are wrong. I think yeah. I might have missed, you don't missed very one. good notes. <laughs> we just, see, the, just the handwriting, probably. Just the handwriting. We yeah. see them slowly clearing through strip. Again, this is what they didn't really do last time. They did a lackluster clear, and it really just came and bit them in every single possible angle. Afterwards, Meads is at the top floor trying to find the alibi with Deepak doubling up, but and Jinxed as well. But there are two bodies up there and could catch them on main stairs here. Vavish is as quiet as a mouse could be as deadly as, well, thousands of mice. And no alibi is the one that pulls out the frag. Quickly cry and rotates, and Leonski finds rips in the meantime. But there are the spots upstairs, and, the, you know, they've done their work. They've pulled back to site. They don't need to look for another frag, and they're just going to hand over this ground and let them take over the top floor. Because as we've already said, that basement is so vast and so big that at that point it just becomes easy to kind of... Hold your, well, I say easy to hold yourself down there. It becomes something where you don't feel like you're missing out. You've still got so many angles to cover, even with every single body on that basement floor, that it's not the worst decision to have everyone on point. Plenty of time for trust. Minute to go. Now they'll start to create a bit of execution potential as, you know, the, yeah, yeah, have the buck. You need to try and utilize him to the best of your ability. You have nades, of course, accompanying that. You have Sophia. You can stun. Sophia's actually really great uh, for this position, especially if you look towards the blue. You know, you can stun anybody behind the massive generator unit, and it just allows, you know, potentially me to combo that. If you get hit by a stun grenade, you don't move very fast. You know, your turning speed is very limited. You can't really dodge a nade in that scenario, so that could be an option for Trust if they're still worrying about blue, which they have all right to whenever there is, of course, a Valkyrie lurking in that position. And now, Jinx now looking to be the forefront of this attack. Flashbang tossed in to try and blind and impair the vision of Orgulus, but nobody there to really follow up on it. And with only a limited time, they need to start pushing in. And somehow Jaeger has managed to do the loop de loop and pull and still going for another kill for Driven. Now looking for again some more pushing in. There's the IQ Driven going massive now. 1v2. Meads all to do it. Oh, and somehow Driven's pulled that one away. Wow, that you didn't have to take the firefight, really didn't, but just wanted to spray fire. And it was the power of the black eye skin, I believe, that was able to funnel those bullets into the heads of the opponents. Just really, really brilliant play. Five, uh, six, four, even, we find ourselves on. You know, and it's just those kind of situations and those kind of clutches, you can't really rely upon them, but when they come to fruition, my God, are they excellent to see. Crying rips and driving all flying away with frags right now. Six for Matt Point for Orglis. So for trust in that last round, 
I feel as if they were they were kind of slacking on the coverage that they were giving their Fermite. You know, once that breach gets open, sure you can utilize that as of course your main way of getting into the bomb site. Equally, 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 we can also see a lot of defenders kind of push around that and use that as as a great tool of really catching people by surprise. Like how often do you do you ever see just somebody run straight through a breach that Fermite's made? Never. Never. But because it's such close quarter combat, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, there's always a lot that we can kind of look down and say on this map. It's been, I think, similar playstyles is a word of kind of, or similar playstyles is a way of phrasing it. Not as similar as we've seen on other teams, but again, it's just been a bit, I'm trying to think of a word that isn't insulting, but it's been a bit basic, been a bit simple from the teams at points. They've kind of run with strategies and then things have started to fall apart and they've just try and frack their way out of it and stuff like that. And I guess it's, again, the similarities from these teams. They know each other very well. Orglas, last potential round for them will be in towards that Jim and Bedroom. And, well, you know, you look at Jim and Bedroom, it's been actually really decent for Orglas to attack. I thought they had a great attack that one time, utilizing, uh, as where I kind of made points about the Capital Arrows, saving him for the final couple of seconds. It kind of sanctions off a lot of the players who want to try and push in uh, and try and stop your defuse as it comes in. And straight away, Orglas already one man up. Yeah. And that's a nice rotation hole as well to add into that kind of aggressive uh, nature that Driver's kind of taken on here. Yeah, they lost the buck very quickly there. He just kind of stepped in. You think Meads needs to drone a little bit more. Jinx Dowd is going to apply the pressure instantly up these stairs and find their way towards the firefight. Again, the aggressive extension that we saw them run last time they were on this point all the way through onto CCTV. they have not sure if they've decided to reinforce. Yep, they have reinforced the rotation once they got the one frag, and here's the stacking up. But this time, the difference is Thermite is alive, laying it on the floor and trying to catch it. And the C4 just does not go over the top, tries it for the second time. No, double messed up, but there's at least the ankle hold left. And KS really desperately wants to get that C4 and sadly explodes it, realizing you just can't reach that. Your arms are not that long, Bandit. But from this point, Maverick is making this more and more uncomfortable. KS is going to dig in and cash room and smash some cash all over himself and try and hope that the money blesses him with violence. But at this point, it's only really a matter of time before Trust get the angles and the ability to shut down on the man inside. Durbin is on the other... Uh, flex at least as Rip suffers an ability to try and cover and there he goes. Good attempt bandit, but too little too late, I'm afraid. Still uh, advantage for trust, but Leonski on low HP has to be careful himself and well driving now. He's up close and personal, ready to go with the 416, has been droned out and now has to push his way back. Most important thing for trust is the fact that Leonski is alive. He still has utility, still has of course the smoke arrows that he can use and has used one fire arrow to try and push their way in towards construction and crying aggressive with the jump out, but didn't get anything. The only thing he came away with was a couple of bullet holes in his back leg. A lot of pressure now on Orglas. They're not good to have, sorry. And we can see them shutting down now. They've still got the smoke canisters in pocket and the bl uh, blinking health of two of the attackers makes that a very worrying prospect. And Deepak is suffering in and amongst it as well. Pulls away, but again, that is more damage dealt. At the same time, Capital is still up and crying and Devon are quite low as well. Creeping closer and closer to a firefight here to try and put more of this famed Orglas aggression. And Kryon is still underneath as well, wanting to throw a C4 through as many holes as possible. But with Avish hitting the floor and only 10 seconds left, this looks like a very impossible situation and it's just made even worse. The C4 goes off. We've clamored and claimed for it for a very long time. Leonski finds a frag, but there is no time to put the diffuser down and Orglas take this first map and take the half on Clubhouse. Wow, Orglas, really impressive to hold it out in the end game. Trust just falling short time and time again. I just don't know what's going on with them. I'll see if they can bounce back, of course. We still have one more map to go. Map two, it's gonna be coming your way real soon.
predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight. Everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.